Hi there, Andy Mortler back. Uh, in previous videos I've spoken a bit about an internet site called Outerzone. Uh, this is a site that uh, has compiled model aircraft plans, uh, free, downloadable, of be it past kits or past plans that are no longer readily available. My winter build for 2015 was of the model that we see in front of us here. It's of the pilot company um, sadly, uh, out of business now. It's of the quick build series, the QB10L. Now, the model has had its maiden flight and all went well, uh, but what I'd like to talk a bit about uh, is the aileron control system for the model. Um, I wanted to keep uh, very closely to the design of the model aircraft, and uh, planes of this size these days, or of any size really these days, you would more than likely see a uh, servo, a single servo, set into the underside of each wing panel, um, driving with a with a drive with a rod um, each respective aileron. Well, back in the day, uh, it was common practice to have a single servo set into the top uh, of the uh, of the wing in the centre, with two rods driving the torque rods um, to either aileron left and right. Now, um, like I say, it was probably more of a system back in the day, and uh, probably due to cost of servos, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I have a model aircraft uh, book here by the late great David Boddington, first published in 1974, and uh, it describes uh, in quite a lot of detail actually the, um, the system for mounting the servo and the, the, the control rods driving the two torque rods. Uh, you can find articles still these days about how to go about how, how to go about making your own. This magazine uh, is from 2015 September. Small torque rods, okay, for model aircraft. What does it say here? Twin aileron servos are all the rage, but torque rods still have their place when building RC models, especially of the smaller variety. Now, um, okay, so like I say, and perhaps even on the internet, you may be able to find uh, how to go about making these torque rods. Well, I've moved on from. Um, this this model now, like I say, it's finished and it's had its maiden flight. Now I was also quite happy to find on the internet again off Outer Zone from the pilot kits, uh, the Pilot Attacker 28. Now this kit, uh, this model is uh, quite close to my heart because as a teenager I actually built two of them, um, having bought two kits, uh, and I actually learned this was my first low wing model aircraft. So uh, like I said, I was quite happy to uh, to find this. Now here is the wing. This is how far I've got at the moment. Um, uh, it's with the mount, the servo mount set. Again, it's going to have rods with the uh, driving two torque rods. Now, okay, so yesterday I uh, went and made myself this. These are the torque rods in question. Okay, so what do you need? What, what materials and what are you going to have to do to, to, to do to get yourself to make up the torque rod? Well, you're going to have to have some spring steel wire. You will have to have a look on the plan to find out and have a really have a bit of a guesstimation of the size of the model and uh, what's what's what diameter spring steel wire you're going to use. That will dictate what uh, diameter um, brass tube you're going to use. Okay, so the worst thing that you could probably do is have a sloppy fit of the uh, the brass uh, over the spring steel wire. You want to have it so that it runs nicely. Okay, and it's a nice sliding fit without it uh, having any any wobble at all. Okay, when you uh, I, w I would suggest well it's not suggest it's it's the best method I think start with the point okay grind a point on the end of the wire that's going to go into the aileron and work back from there along the whole system. So start with the point, measure the length that's going to go into the into the aileron itself. Put a ninety degree bend. Now a good t a good tri a trick is to if you want to get a nice decent sharp 90 degree bend get yourself a block of, um, of mild steel drill a hole at 90 degrees into the block uh, of the same diameter as the wire pop the wire in to the hole like this okay and whack it with a hammer don't go too crazy and that will give you a really nice 90 degree bend all right then you've got to work out what length brass tube you're going to have to have all right, that will be shown on the plan itself. The brass tube, when you are cutting it, uh, there are a couple of ways of cutting it, but I find the easiest is just to get yourself a modeling knife and just have this knife purely for this job. 
nothing else and then roll that on a hard surface and then it will snap it'll snap easily and that knife okay like i say is just for that job don't expect to go cutting brass and then cutting ball sword nice and easy or, or cutting japanese tissue to cover a, a peanut scale model aircraft that's not going to happen that knife is is going to be dulled off quite quickly anyway after you've finished cutting the length of brass too a nice way of getting the burrs and all the wire uh, the the, the bent over brass inside the hole out is to stick it in a in a chuck small handheld handheld chuck hold it like that tap it on the end like that so i can do it like that takes the birds out and while you're at it do the outside okay turn it around do the other side all right so where are we? we're up to there now so you're going to have that we're up to there that that rod then is still going to be on its uh, on its full length You've got that 90 degree bend put the brass don't forget to put the brass onto the rod okay then looking at the plan again measure now you're going to have another 90 degree bend but going at 90 degrees to there okay again pop that in the hole chunk tap another sharp 90 degree bend this leave leave long okay i'm lucky i've got a small metal turning lathe i actually turned these brass um collars to, to solder on but you can use anything you can probably use a bit of the brass tube that's just they're just keepers to keep the the, the nylon um, connector onto the rod okay upside down uh, another good trick for soldering is uh, don't use try not to use a, a very small uh, electrical wire um, solder because the heat isn't going to be enough another good trick is to get yourself more grips bit of brass okay make a chiseled end clean it up and then with a blowtorch that's that's how I do all my heavy soldering heat it up you've got the heat then directly into the job you're not you're not hanging around trying to get the heat in it's going to be a dull joint and then the plastic starts to go out of shape because you're leaving the heat on too long get the heat in there drop the solder on there get the heat away and let it cool and like I say, when I said uh, leave this long, it wasn't. Uh, it was for a reason. When you do the other side, drop the collar on. You've, it's, a, it's like a heat sink. The heat will dissipate not just into the into the metal that's inside the plastic, but it will heat. It, it will dissipate away. Okay. And once you've done that, then you can cut it flush. I cut it probably about half a centimeter away with a disc cutter, and then with a bucket of, with, a, with a tub of water on a grinder on a grinding wheel, just keep tap in the wheel and then into the water straight away so you don't you, you don't want the the plastic to do uh, to start to um, dis to uh, lose shape and uh, and start to melt that's the worst thing okay so there you have a torque rod up and ready to go onto the back of the um, the wing here the trailing edge of the wing now the method that i will show all right this is just a mock up Okay, that's the back of your trailing edge. Using brass tube, gouge half the diameter into the back where the torque rod is going to go. And also cut away a recess here so that the torque rod can move back and forth into the, in, into the, into the, uh, the wood. All right. Pin it, bit of CA glue, that's just to hold it. Remove the pins. Okay. and then when you're finally ready the other half that is the back trailing edge to to cap and to hold the brass tube in mix up some epoxy glue okay that is just to go over the brass and then around the wood area use some uh, aliphatic glue clamp it and everything's good everything's going to be fine the only other thing that I deviated from the plan on this build was that I'm not a great fan of having stepped um, uh, ribs. What do I mean by that? Well, okay. The plan had the leading edge sheet up to the spar, and then it, it had a step going up, and it was just plain on the back. Well, I don't. I, I'm not a big fan of that. So what I did, I made a rib that was. It's not. It's semi-symmetrical. It's not fully symmetrical. Um, that's why I put a, a marker, marker pen, black dot, so that as I'm cutting it with the former, 
put a dot on the top and when I make the wing if the dots are at the top then that's okay uh, then I, what I did I sheeted to the back she sheeted to the um, back edge of the of the spar and then I had um, on top of the false trailing edge at the back here I put 1.5 millimeter balsa and then cap strips for 1.5 millimeter um, okay so that's as far as I've got with the uh, pilot attacker 28 um, I hope that uh, it's uh, it's been uh, been of use showing you how to build these little torque rods uh, so there is still a place in the modern world for for these uh, little gizmos uh, thanks for watching